Hey guys! So welcome back to another video on this uh, bikini prep series. Um, just sharing my journey, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, uh, on my, my journey to my first NPC bikini competition. Um, so it's something that I started at the beginning of the year, something that I have been scared of uh, forever, I guess, and decided to finally jump into. So. Uh, what I want to share today is I got my suit, my first bikini, so I just wanted to share that with you, super excited about it, um, as well as kind of my process in doing so and how I picked it out and where I got it. That was a bit overwhelming for me, trying to figure out how that all worked and the best type of suit and all that, so I wanted to share some of that with you because I know I had to do a lot of research and watch a lot of videos and try and figure out what the heck I was doing because I didn't really have anyone to help me in that process. So I want to share that as well. Uh, so this is the suit. This is the top, so it's an emerald green with rhinestones on it. And then of course the bottom matches. Uh, and then I also have these two. There's my bracelets I'll be wearing. Uh, I'll be have I'll just have some earrings too. I don't think I'm gonna do a ring, um, but in case you don't know, most competitors wear at least one bracelet, if not two, big blingy earrings, and then a lot of people wear a ring as well. Um, so I know my posing coach said don't go overboard on uh, jewelry, but just you know, bracelet, ring, earrings, you know, something simple. You don't need to overdo the jewelry. So I got this from Aspire Swimwear. And it's actually an Etsy shop. Um, so the bikini competition suits are crazy expensive, um, considering how much material this is. Obviously, not a lot. Um, they range anywhere from I would say typically like 150 to 500 dollars. I mean, some people spend a lot, and the more. Basically, the way it works is the more rhinestones you get on it, the more expensive it gets. Um, so that's why mine is a little on the simple side. Um, I actually thought about doing no rhinestones at all, but I didn't want to feel like awkward or out of place because most people do get a little bling on their suit. So that's why I decided to do that. Um, <clears throat> so this suit in particular, I went with this shop on Etsy. Um, because someone else had told me to maybe check on there for suits that weren't so expensive. And this I found, it had really good reviews, everyone loved their suit. Um, and this, there was kind of a variety, there was just this like hologram material with no rhinestones for like 90 bucks or something, so I was like, sweet, I can totally do that. Um, so that's what I was debating for a while, is if I wanted to pay the extra for rhinestones. Um, so I ended up getting this suit, which was $129, so still way cheaper than most places. Most suits start at $150, and then as you add rhinestones, it gets more expensive. This with the rhinestones, um, without anything like special, just these, uh, no custom design or anything, was $129. Um, so that was great. That was a great deal, and I was looking for, I wanted something that could be customized. Um, I had thought previously about renting a suit because you can rent or about um, like buying it from someone else like a used suit because most people you know they wear it once for less than a day and then you know just hang on to it so I was gonna do that but then I thought you know I don't I don't know what their measurements are I don't know what condition it's in what if I get it and it doesn't fit well because it's not my specific measurements and so I just decided ultimately I didn't want to sacrifice uh, on how it fit and how it looked that's very important and I think the more I research just realized it's better to just have something made for you so um, I this shop was they do kind of you can get like a generic like small medium large or you can specify all your custom measurements Tracy is the lady who owns it and makes it. She was super responsive to everything. I had so many questions. I was kind of obnoxious. She sent me samples of colors and answered all my questions and was super helpful. So I would totally recommend that if you're looking for a more cost affordable option um, and don't have, you know, $300 to spend on a suit, especially if you don't know if you're going to continue competing or what, you know, I didn't want to go crazy with it. So that's what I got.
So, okay, so now I wanna share a little bit more beyond just the pricing and where to find suits is some of the important things to remember when you're picking out a suit, how to pick one. So this, I spend a lot of time trying to figure out like what size do I need, what cut do I need, uh, when I realized there were different connectors and different things, I was like, I don't even know where to start with this. Like, what what looks good, what's important, what's not important. Um, so, I'll just give you kind of what I learned along the way, and hopefully that will help you. Um, for something so seemingly basic, it can be pretty uh, complex. So, one of the main things that you have to decide on is the cut of the bikini bottoms. Um, so... <laughs> They're going to be pretty small either way. This is the front, this is the back, which is scrunched. I think, I don't think I've seen any that aren't scrunched. You want to get that. This is a micro cut. And I noticed that some companies uh, label their cuts a little bit different, but I've seen pro cut, I've seen uh, bikini cut, not bikini, pro cut, Brazilian cut, uh, micro cut, there's just a, kind of a few variations. Um, so there's generally, I would say, an NPC, they say like a third of your glute should be covered. So that's kind of like the maximal coverage one, which would be probably a little bit less than a normal swimsuit, but kind of along those same lines. Uh, and then there's like a, I think, pretty standard cut, which is like a pro cut, um, I believe. I don't know if there's any other names for it. And then there's like a Brazilian or a micro. And then some people make even more custom designs. So I think depending on what you want and the shape of your glutes and all that, they'll do different variations of uh, width and variations of like how low it sits on your back, right above your uh, crack, basically. Um, so the this one that I went with just had three options. I went with the smallest, uh, which, you know, kind of uncomfortable to have that much of your butt hanging out on stage, especially when you've never done it before. But I chose that because I have smaller glutes. That's something that I've had to work so hard to build up and I'm still trying to build it and shape it as much as possible for the, for the show. So what I've uh, found generally and what Tracy at Aspire Swimmer suggested was the smaller cuts are better to help kind of make small but small glutes look bigger and rounder. So that's why I went with it because I need all the help I can get, uh, you know, helping to highlight my glutes and make them look big uh, so that my body looks symmetrical because I have a little bit wider shoulders. So I need to have that like nice rounded glute look. So that's why I went with a little one. I would say probably most people go, or you know, the majority of people probably go with like a pro cut, which is just a little bit bigger than that. Um, so. I don't know how each cut looks on different glute shapes and sizes, but that is a factor that you need to consider when you're getting a suit is the shape and size of your glutes and what's going to help them look their best. If it's, you know, if you have a bigger glute, then you may want more coverage because that'll actually help kind of tone it down a little bit. So you really need to understand uh, the size and shape of your body and what judges are looking for. Um, so in general, I would say in bikini, it's kind of all about the butt and hamstrings. I know the workshop I went to where the head judge um, was explaining what they look for, he said there's no, he didn't necessarily say you have to have a large set of glutes, uh, but that a soft butt will not win on his stage. So from what I've seen from all the winners that I've looked at, typically it's very well developed rounded glutes and so you just want a suit that will help that pop and look that way um, whether it's minimizing it because you have more and it it's bigger than the rest of your body and not symmetrical or whether you're smaller like me and have to kind of even that out so that's the cut part uh, I haven't seen as much variation on the tops but I think there's some and I know with this one like there was the option of less side boob coverage or more side boob coverage so I think you can decide a little bit depending on the maker how big you want the actual cups to be um, and then another thing that was uh, important for me is having uh, like this has little you're not gonna be able to see it but it has a little opening like other bathing suits where there's a shaper pad inside um, so there is room to stuff it basically um, so again I you know, and for most people, obviously, the leaner you get, uh, you know, for women, your chest is 
it's fat. It's just fat. So you're going to lose it when you get leaner. Um, and you don't have to have like big boobs to win a show, but it does kind of help with proportions and it just kind of, I think, helps to present a feminine, sexy appearance, which is a big part of bikini. So I wanted to make sure that I had something that I could stuff with padding um, so that I can help, uh, you know, this area look a little bit more full. Um, I know there's some great videos um, that I found too on like how to fake a boob job, how to, you know, make it look like you have fake boobs because a lot of girls in bikini do have actually um, implants. So to kind of compete and look feminine and sexy, I wanted that look. So I wanted, just wanted to make sure that I had something that I would have space to um, help myself out there uh, with some shaping. So, um, so that's another part of it, probably just making sure that you can fit something in there if you need a little help or picking something that maybe downplays if you have too large of a chest. Um, and I know just FYI, some of the uh, things that I found and judges I heard speak would say like bigger boobs really don't do anything. And in fact, for some people, if it makes their body look disproportionate um, or not symmetrical, they actually counted people down for having big boobs um, if they didn't fit their body. So that's the main thing is they're really looking for symmetry within your body, small waist, big glutes, and a sexy, you know, feminine appearance. So uh, keep that in mind. And then the connectors, so there is uh, five connectors. There's the two that go on your uh, top straps. There's the middle connector. And then there are the connectors on the two sides of the suits. So that part can be totally customized, generally. Um, this shop that I went with had like pretty much standard, like these are the standards that just came with this suit and I like them so I kept them. But I did ask for a different, she, she gave options, like here's the standard, but you can choose from these couple other options. Um, so that, I don't actually know any particular uh, science behind kind of size and shape, but I just thought I kind of have a little bit bigger, broader upper body. Um, so I wanted to keep these like fairly dainty and small so that it didn't add any I don't know, draw any attention up here, any size, and just keep it very kind of delicate and feminine looking. So that's why I did the little ones. And I just, what I did was go through like Instagram and YouTube and just look at bikini competitors, look at their suits, and try and find people that have kind of my shape and size, um, and even the color that I liked, and look to try and figure out, you know, what do they have? How does it look? What do I want? So I saw a lot of people with about this size, kind of more slim, and then I saw some with a little bit thicker, but generally I saw kind of a thinner um, connector up there, so that's why I went with that. Uh, this one, I really don't know too much about the science either. I just, I saw some that had a very tight kind of clasp, just a little thing, and I, I it just it looked too, I don't know, I just didn't like the look of it as much. Um, so I just picked something that kind of matched with the the other kind of style of the connectors. I just went pretty simple on everything, but I just didn't want something like super tiny or super wide. Um, so I don't know if that's too helpful, but... And then on these ones, this is probably where people get a little bit more interesting. Like there's, you'll probably see ones that drape a lot, like there's two or three drapes on it. Um, I had initially seen a few people say that if you have shorter legs, um, and yeah, I think if you're shorter, kind of like smaller glutes, that the draping can actually kind of take away from you if you're petite, um, and it's better to kind of keep a slimmer, um, connector. Um, but they look really pretty. <laughs> Uh, so I ultimately just decided, I saw a lot of suits, again, as I was just kind of sorting through pictures on Instagram and stuff, that were kind of just a thick, plain band like this. Um, typically that, or one small string, um, or the draped style. So I chose this just because, um, I guess my, one, I saw it a lot, so it seemed like it's a pretty standard look. 
Uh, two, I didn't want to, because I have short legs and I'm just short in general, I want to elongate that as much as possible. So I figured if that is correct about the draping, that I didn't really want much draping unless it was really slim. But that wasn't an option with this suit, so that's why I didn't get it. Uh, and then I wanted, I need a bit more size kind of on my hips. So I thought if a, with a little bit thicker connector, maybe it would just kind of help. Um, I was afraid a really thin little band would kind of, uh, it wouldn't help me out. It would kind of maybe attract attention to the fact that I need a little bit more size down there. So I just wanted to add a little bit more coverage, not that this is covering a whole lot, but that was sort of my thought on how it would work. That's just my theory. I don't know if that's true or helpful at all, but that's why I decided to pick these. So the different, three different, well, three sets, three areas of connectors are one big thing that you'll have to pick with your suit. Um, and then the color is of course a huge one. That's the biggest part, way more than the connectors or anything like that is the color of your suit. So I did a lot of research on that, trying to figure out what to wear. Um, and I would say ultimately it came down to just what do I like? What did I feel comfortable wearing? Um, and what seems to pop well and what seems to work well with, I looked up a lot of like what looks good with blonde hair. Um, so I would say think about your hair color and your skin tone and you know, typically what looks good on you. Um, I like green, I think greens and teals tend to look pretty good on me and I did see a lot um, both in pictures of people with my, you know, hair style, color, st skin tone wearing um, dark greens and dark blues um, and they seemed to work really well. Um, it looked really good, it popped on stage um, and it just green happens to be one of my favorite colors. I just like it, I feel comfortable in it. and. I, it seems like a lot of people wear blue and wear red. Um, a lot of people wear green too, but I just felt like like purple, blue, red are almost overdone. And I wanted something that wasn't the same as everyone else. Um, I don't really like purple or pink, so that wasn't going to be an option. I thought about red, but a lot of people say that when you have the tan on, which is a huge part, you have to really consider if you're going to look washed out. And I think red tends to get washed out. And I just... I personally, I love wearing red on a normal basis, but I think on stage it gets washed out. And um, just from pictures I looked at, it seems like it tends to look better on brunettes. A lot of brunettes wear red and it just seems to really work. Um, it seems on blondes like it can kind of get washed out a little bit. So I thought the green and this particular green was just kind of a classy, nice look that still pops on stage and works really well with the blonde hair. Uh, again, the head judge that did that workshop said that you can pretty much never go wrong with like red, blue, or dark green. So, you know, I think they, the judges critique a little bit on bikini just so that it, you know, just as long as it's something that really fits you and suits you and helps, you know, stand out on stage and helps you look your best. So, uh, I think that is everything. So th those are just a lot of things that you will... Now, if you're thinking about competing, just different things to consider when you buy a suit. Um, and I would just, I did a ton of research. I looked through all sorts of companies on Instagram and um, their bikinis, what things look like on different people. And so I think it's just really important to know, you know, your hair color, your skin color, what looks good on you, what's gonna look good on stage, um, what's gonna pop. Um, oh, one last thing is the crystals. I didn't even realize this. So these are clear crystals. There's also AB crystals, which are like multicolor. They reflect a lot of light. Um, so there's that option too. You can choose what types of crystals you want on your suit. I just went clear to keep it just classy. I wanted it to just still look just green on stage. And I didn't want too much, too many crystals. Some people, I feel like, go overboard on the rhinestones. And then on stage with the lights, it almost just looks white or it looks like like this would almost look like a light green or something um, so that was just another thing I noticed like too many crystals although it looks really pretty changes the color of your suit when the hits when the lights hitting it um, so just to keep that in mind what things are gonna look like under the lights um, so I just want to keep it pretty simple and classy and not too multicolored like I just want to kind of keep the green just keep you know keep the crystals all consistent with the connectors and what went on the suit. So that's one other thing is the 
So I hope that's helpful for you. Um, I know I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out with the suit, so I hope that's helpful. One other thing I want to share with you, I'm getting all excited about all these like nerdy fitness products, especially as I'm prepping and trying to make things easier. So I just got this the other day, I ordered it. Um, this is, if you're you know pretty into fitness, you've probably heard of six pack bags, which are much bigger than this. They look like a duffel bag. Um, and they are a meal carrier. So it basically is enough to fit six containers of meals um, and an ice pack into a bag that you can carry around. So that when you're meal prepping and you're trying to keep food with you and you're trying to eat on a regular schedule and you wanna make sure you don't eat anything that's off your diet, um, you've got it with you. So I've had like a little insulated lunch bag that I carry around, but I have to like stuff it so awkwardly and it's really hard to keep I carry so much food with me that it's hard to do it that way. So I finally uh, got like a legit meal carrier bag, not just a like lunch bag. So um, the six pack bags are pretty expensive. Again, I'm trying to do everything on like a serious budget. So this I actually ordered off of Groupon, um, but they have it on the Amazon or on the Jack's website. So it's Jack's brand. Um, I have some of their shakers. So it's cool because it comes with a shaker cup. And then it's an insulated bag, and this is like basically just a mini. It's a little mini, what's it called? Jack's Fit Pack. It's a little mini bag. So in it, it has six little meal containers, an ice pack, and then it's insulated inside, and then it's got like a little pocket down here. It also has a pill case that's not in it because I was using it earlier. Um, so the only thing about the mini, I would say, is... So this is basically, sorry, I'll just add, this is what a six pack bag looks like. So it's like a way easier way to store all your stuff. Um, but this just has, I mean, the containers are not huge. They're pretty small. And then the top container is even smaller. So it's, you can't really fit an entire meal in there, but that's like a good snack size. Um, and then it's got the little ice pack in the middle. So. Um, I'm just super excited about that because some days I am, I drive a lot for work and for meeting clients and stuff like that and so so some days I'm gone, you know, all day and I'm trying to eat, you know, I usually can get in breakfast and, and like, po like my post-workout, pre-workout at home and then like mid-morning snack or breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner even sometimes are all on the road somewhere or at work or whatever so I'm really excited about this to have meals more convenient. I was also thinking this will be great for competition day um, when I need to have just, you know, a little bit of food around, probably plenty of rice cakes and, you know, chicken, stuff like that. Um, but because it's just small, I like it. It's not like a huge duffel bag that I have to carry around. It's just a little guy. Um, and then it comes with a shaker cup, which is super cool. And then a pill case, because again, I have a lot of supplements that I'm trying to take right now, you know, pre and post workout and in between meals and it, you know, it's, it gets complicated. So it's really helpful to have one little compartment to keep everything in. So they didn't send it to me. I bought it. It's, I'm not getting, they didn't ask me to like talk about it. I just, I appreciate when cool, when people show cool things that they've found that are helpful for just living this fitness lifestyle. So I just thought I'd share that because super excited about it. I'm going to be using it a lot in the coming weeks, just in the midst of prep and work and driving like all over Los Angeles. I am three weeks out now getting ready to uh, actually wear this thing on stage so I'm starting to practice my posing in it um, get that all down um, and I don't even know I don't think I ever like fully said in a previous video but I have for sure decided that I'm doing the March show so I'm definitely three weeks out come hell or high water whatever I happen to look like gonna hope for the best. Um, so I've got three more weeks to the show. It's definitely, uh, I'm feeling it. It's getting there. I'm starting to get a little bit more tired. Um, I'm starting to really just want like some yogurt land and pizza and stuff like that. But um, it's not horrible. It's been actually a lot easier than I expected. Just uh, tiring. I'm just not sleeping well and I'm starting to struggle through the workouts a little bit. Um, I am going to start adding in more cardio. Um, so I'm still kind of carrying a little bit more fat than I really should have so I'm gonna start probably adding in a bit more I've switched to hit cardio just four sessions a week of 20 minutes probably gonna add in a little bit more 
Uh, I may have a macro cut coming up on Monday. So I'm currently at 115 carbs, 150 protein, and 60 fat. That's for four days. And then I do a refeed day where I have 250 carbs um, and then adjust my fat and protein just slightly. Um, so that's been the last couple of weeks, which has helped me drop a few pounds. I'm assuming probably in the coming weeks um, the carbs are going to come down a little bit more, uh, but we'll see. I have uh, my posing coach is helping me with nutrition as well, so that cut may be coming up. But um, I've dropped probably about a pound and a half in the last two weeks, so that's exciting. I was kind of stuck at about 117 and a half for a while. Um, now I'm kind of somewhere between 115.8 and 116 probably. So. I'm trying to drop a few more pounds and some, well, not even so much pounds, but body fat. So that's where we're at. I hope that is helpful for you, and uh, hopefully I'll have some more videos pushed up here soon to keep you updated on this journey. I hope it is helpful for you and inspiring your own journey wherever you're at. So uh, please share with me what you're going through. If you have any questions, comments, we'd love to hear them. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share with anyone this might be helpful for, and I'll see you again very soon.